Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The EU and six Southern African countries signed an economic partnership agreement in Botswana last week. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the 10 year plus journey to the conclusion of the trade talks. Hi Terence. Uh, hello. What is the SADC EPA and why was it negotiated with only six Southern African countries? That's right, it's the SADC, the Southern African Development Community EPA, but it's only six of the 15 SADC members. Most of them, uh, five of them, are part of the SACU, the Southern African Customs Union, the oldest customs union in the world. That's South Africa, Botswana, Lesotho, Swaziland, and Namibia. And then Mozambique has decided to also join the SADC EPA. It's the first EPA that uh, the European Union have had been able to sign with uh, an African region. Uh, they've been negotiating, as you said in your intro, for over 10 years to try and get these, uh, this sort of post Lome, post Cotonou agreement, uh, which are unilateral trade uh, accession uh, agreements. They've been trying to negotiate these with Africa, Caribbean and Pacific region. They've got one in the Caribbean in place. In Africa, the SADC is the first one. They claim to be making progress in East Africa, the uh, East African community, um, but they've also hit snags in the West Africa. So this, this has now been signed in Kasane, uh, Botswana and uh, it really opens the way to a, a sort of a, a reciprocal trade arrangement, although it's very asymmetrical in the way it's been uh, structured. So the, everyone but South Africa gets uh, duty-free, quota-free access to the 500 million consumer strong European market. South Africa has a different deal. As you said, the deal with South Africa differs to the other five. Why this differential treatment? South Africa, uh, post-apartheid, um, uh, was treated as a more developed uh, African economy. So they, they want initially we wanted to get Lome treatment, which was this quota-free, uh, duty-free duty access to the European Union. They said we were too developed for that, so we entered into talks. And in 2000, we signed a, a free trade agreement, uh, the, the European South, uh, South Africa-European Union uh, Trade and Development uh, Agreement. And that's really been governed our um, trade relationship with Europe since 2000. And uh, th that gives us fairly good access to Europe, but we do also uh, give, do we also reciprocate uh, to Europe. Um, and therefore we didn't really need to enter an EPA uh, with, uh, with the European Union. The reason why we, dis we entered these the talks uh, late, in fact, we entered around 2007, was to try and ensure that there wasn't differential treatment within SACU um, and as much as possible also not differential treatment within uh, Southern African Development Community. SACU in particular ha it has a common um, a tra a trade or tariff regime and therefore we, we didn't want uh, Europe having uh, a different arrangement with the different members of SACU. So it was about harmonization. But in the process we also eked out some uh, better trade uh, arrangements with the Europeans, mostly on the agricultural front, uh, mostly in the area of wine where we've got a big, a large quota, I think over 100 million litres a year uh, to that we can uh, enter Europe uh, duty-free. Um, we also got a quota on sugar, which is new, and we got some benefits around canned fruit. We paid for that though in, in by recognising geographical, uh, geographical indicators. This has been a long-standing, uh, well, desire from the Europeans. They have a number of products that they would like recognized and don't, pe don't want people to use those names, ranging from champagne, port and sherry to things like feta cheese. So we've recognized over 250 G GRs, European GRs, and in return we also had uh, over 100 South African GRs recognized in this EPA, including rooibos and honeybush tea, as well as uh, things like Karoo lamb and then a number of wines and spirits. What happens now and what are the trade priorities for South Africa? Now we need to go through a process of ratification. So the, the deal was actually signed, in, uh, initialed in 2014. Uh, subsequent to that, there's been two years of what they call technical scrubbing. So the, this is a massive amount of uh, work that's gone under, uh, been undertaken over the last two years, really looking at tariff line by tariff line to what was agreed and ensuring that is actually th the case in the agreement. So that scrubbing took place uh, ahead of this meeting in Kasane. Kasane was chosen symbolically because it's on 
the confluence of another number of Southern African countries, but two of which, Botswana and and Namibia are, are in this deal, but it's also very close to the border of Zambia and Zimbabwe. So it was a symbolic uh, area to have the signing ceremony. And basically now uh, the countries need to take, these t take this uh, uh, signed deal to their parliaments for ratification. So the six African countries will need to ratify. South Africa has indicated they'll take a table at, in parliament during June. Uh, I imagine the other African countries will also want to move ahead with ratification. It also needs to go to the European Parliament in Brussels and that, uh, that for ratification. And I imagine a number of the 28 members of the European Union will also need to take it through their parliaments for ratification. So that's the next step. I think it's, it's really the last mile. Um, and then the, the, the new trade regime will come into place. And then for South Africa, I suppose it releases up the trade negotiation resources for its main priority, which is Africa, the, f the trilateral free trade agreement <coughs> um, up the East Coast from Cape to Cairo is a high priority. We understand that South Africa has made an offer to the East African community as well as to Egypt, and those need to now be, uh, be advanced. Um, and eventually we'll have a free trade area uh, over that area, uh, over that, uh, that side of the co eastern side of the continent. And then the African Union is very keen that we, that the talks advance on a continental free trade agreement. So I think those will be our priorities. That's seen as our trade blue sky area for South Africa. So I think that will be a priority. These, uh, but we'll still need to nurture a relationship with Europe, a very important trading partner. Um, it's still our biggest, uh, number one as a bloc uh, trading partner with China as our m biggest single individual country uh, trading partner. And then uh, you can obviously see that, you know, when with uh, AGOA earlier in the year, there was also a lot of resources that had to be dedicated to that, sorting out South Africa's continual, continued uh, beneficiary status. So I think with Europe and America sort of s now bedded down, there'll be a lot more resources that can be dedicated to the African trade agenda. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.